Welcome to the Hebrew Congregation of Houston, part two of our conversation today. Part two. So welcome <laughs> again. Um, we appreciate that you're hanging with us. And we do hope that you appreciate the, the, the first part where hopefully you've been inspired based on what you've heard and that you will take that trip because we do hope one day to make that trip ourselves. So mm -hmm. welcome to the second part. In this part, we will get into our word and feast on the Torah as the as Yah has provided and hopefully we'll speak a word that will be encouraging into your heart but also inspire your life okay but before we do that we did miss giving you the parish offer next week so we just want to um, give you the parish offer next week Thank you. okay so mm -hmm. the parish for next week will be coming from Leviticus chapters 21 through 24 okay. and so that will be our focus for next week but mm -hmm. our focus for this week, you wanted to say something? And what's the parasha for next week called? The parasha for next week is called Emo. Okay. And now you can Okay. But our focus will be on our current study, which is coming from Leviticus chapter 16 through chapters 22. So if you would want to also spend time reading that word for yourself, so you're not just taking what we are mm -hmm. given, but also spending individual time with Yah and trying to better understand His word. And hopefully receive revelation from him right. as well. And it's called Ashrei um, Med Kodeshim for, for today's parasha that he gave you the scriptures for. And so we're just going to turn it. Rabbi, did you want us to do the Shema or with the time being, there being the time constraint, mm -hmm. you just end up going to? You can do the Shema. Okay, so we're going to do that. We're not going to do the songs that we had planned for um today, but we will at least do the Shema, the, the abbreviated version. <laughs> Amen. Ready, babe? Mm -hmm. Shema Yisrael Yahuwah Eloheinu Yahuwah Echad Baruch Shem Mahuto Leolam Waye Yahusha Oha Mashiach Um Kavod Yahuah Ua Hafta Larecha Kamoka Veho Levavka Veho Miodeka Veho Nefeshka Shall we have to Larecha Kamoka Hero Israel, Yahuwah Elohim, Yahuwah is one. Yahusha is the Messiah and he is the glory of the Lord. And you shall love Yahuwah with all your heart and all your soul and all your resources and your neighbor as yourself. Yah, help us to love our neighbor as ourselves. Amen. 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 We pass it over now to our rabbi so that he could lead us in our discussion today. And again, may you receive a blessing from mm -hmm. this word that is coming to you. And again, may you study this word. So before we turn it over to Rabbi, Barukata Yahuha Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam Asher Kedeshinu Bimitzvota Witiwana Al Divrei Torah. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Yahuwah Adonai, our power, King of the universe, who has sanctified us with his commandments and commanded us to study the Torah. Baruch atah Yahuwah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Bachabanu Mecho HaAmim, Wanatan Lanu et Torah To, Baruch atah Yahuwah Adonai, Notena Torah. Amen. Blessed are you, Yahuwah Adonai, our power, King of the universe, who has chosen us from among all the nations and given to us your Torah. Blessed are you, Yahuwah Adonai, giver of the Torah. Amen and hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Pass it to you, Rabbi. Absalom. Amen. Amen. Shabbat shalom, everyone. Shabbat shalom. We're here once again, breaking the bread of life. All right. So this is our our discussion, right? We're going to discuss the Torah. Um, this parashah is a double parashah, by the way, right? It's um, Achremot and Kedoshim. Now, Achremot, uh, you know, when in, in the beginning, it's talking about the death of the sons, right, of, of Aaron. But it goes on as, you, as we start to get into the parashah 
And uh, I like to, you know, kind of take it straight out of the word uh, as our discussion goes on, depending upon the time um, that we have. Because normally when we, if we were in our, in, in our personal place or in a building, you know, we could just go and go in. But because of being online, we try to uh, be more aware of our time so that we can cover as much information as we can. But I always encourage you to, to study, get into it and study the word for yourself, right? Read it yourself. Don't just go by what we say, but read it for yourself because that's what's going to make the difference uh, in your life when you actually read it for yourself. And so that's one of the reasons why every week we'll tell you what the coming uh, uh, scriptural reading is or the parishal for that week so that you can read it for yourself, study it, and then have questions, comments um, uh, about because um, as we grow and as, we, as time goes on, as life takes its place, um, each generation, the scripture uh, has a, a, a different meaning sometimes or, or a different application. For instance, in this parish, oh, it talks about the, the, the scapegoat, talks about the different offerings at the feast. Uh, it talks about things that take place in the land of Israel. Okay. And especially with the Mishkan or the temple, with the temple and, and with, again, with the, with the tent of meetings, there's a difference in application today because we're scattered. And so we have to discuss these things um, as, it, as it pertains to us where we are in our time. Now, there's some things that don't change, no matter whether you're in the land or out of the land. But when you're talking about the different sacrifices, like the scapegoat, Right, and 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 in this, let me just get into it. Let me just share my screen with you. I think it might be better, and then just kind of uh, look at um, some one of the my sources or resources um, that I study from, and just let you see uh, kind of what I do in my study. So I'm going to be using my art scroll just to give you a little taste of, if if it'll allow me to, because it, it's, as you can see on the screen, I have a, the Hebrew on the right side of the screen. The left side, I have the English. And, uh-oh. Something happened. You see how, see how it does? <laughs> and uh, that's why I want to... Yeah, it's gone. Look yeah, at that. It was the whole thing's gone. Better. It's gone. I wanted to share that with you, but it doesn't. It doesn't look like it's going to allow me to do it. Okay, so um, I don't know how I'm going to get that done. Well, maybe I won't be able to share it with my my resource. I'll see if I can get it back up. If it comes up, we'll use it. If not, we won't. But uh, in that sixteenth chapter. Let's just do it. Uh, so we're, we're in Leviticus 16. So everybody can yeah, just turn to their Bible. The Day yeah. of Atonement. Leviticus 16 is where we are. Go ahead, Rabbi. Yeah. So um, with that Leviticus 16, and, and I'll see if I can do it a different way. Let me see if I can pull up something else. Since I can't get on that one, I'll try a different one. How about that? I got so many different sources and resources that Wait a minute, look at that. It's back. It's back. Let's try it again. All right. Let's try this again. I like this one because, again, it, it's the source that gives me Talmud, gives me Mishnah, gives me uh, Rambam uh, in the notes section. But I'm just going to hit a few of the highlights. And, and you can see where I have some highlights. All right. So it says, uh, it talks about the sin offerings, right? But as you go down, it says, uh, it talks about Azazel, right? So it says, verse six, and Aaron shall bring near 
his own sin offering and the bull offering. Now, you know what this is talking about. You know what this is talking about, right? In the book of Hebrews, Day of Atonement. And this is one of the things that is eternal. The Day of Atonement is eternal. Doesn't go away. Every year, we're supposed to acknowledge this. In the, what month is that? Does anybody know what month? It's the seventh month, right? Every year. So we acknowledge the Day of Atonement. And this is where the foundation of it is. Now, it talks about here, it says that Aaron shall place lots upon the two he goats, right? One of the scapegoat, you know, and, and it says one is for Azazel. Now, there's some discussion about Azazel, whether it means a place of perdition. But if you read in, in the Sefer, if you go in the Sefer, it tells you that Azazel was an angel. Uh, and he was a, a, a powerful angel and he's in the earth realm. Okay, but again, the rabbis are coming with the well. It's a, it means a place of, of perdition or destruction. So they send this 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 other one out alive into the wilderness, and with that that goat, what they've done is laid hands on it and placed all the sins of Israel on that goat and send it out. We don't do that today, do we? We don't do that, but we do lay hands on each other and we do pray for each other and we do you know speak the word over. Because it's the time that we live in. Okay. And so it's talking about Aaron, how he should, uh, you know, what he should do, what the priest should do. But we act as that priest today. All right. We act in the place of the priest today. We actually do that. We are, we acknowledge ourselves as a royal priesthood. Okay. Uh, we don't do the scapegoat. It says, um, so again, I'm moving pretty fast. All right. Um, Rabbi, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just wondering, would Yeshua then be our scapegoat? It's taught that way in Christianity, he is our scapegoat. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's taught that way. Um, the lamb, again, when we look about that, the, the lamb that was slain in the Garden of Eden is where the principle is laid down, the shedding of the blood, because the life is in the blood. In this parish, it talks about the life being in the blood, right? And we see that Christianity teaches that Yeshua's blood was shed for us all, right? Um, and I can go with that concept, but also you get into a dilemma there because Israel is his first son, his first begotten son. Israel, not just one person, but the people of Israel become his son. And when you become his son, you you are, and we are his priesthood. Yeshua is a priest. He's a priesthood, right? So it's talking about one person, but it's also talking about a nation of people. Now, what people do you know on the earth that have continually given their blood, their life for the world? See, that's an argument that can be placed there, right? You see? And it's the types, right? There are different types that we go into. There's a lot of typology. And I, and I, and I, again, I can accept that, but I have to also remember that there is a people that the same thing falls upon that people. We're all hung on trees. Well, our ancestors were hung on trees. Yeshua was hung on a tree. Mm -hmm. And we're still being hung on trees. Okay. So it's not just talking about one person. It's also talking about a nation of people that are, that belong to the father. But most people can't accept that, won't accept that. Okay. So that kind of takes us back to the prayer that Yeshua prayed before he was exiting when he talks about praying for them because the world hates me, so he'll hate they'll hate them too, kind of. So it's like we would end up making the same sacrifices. That's right. mm -hmm. Okay. That's right. And that puts more meaning into it. <laughs> he says, I pray that they be in me that like I am in you, that we may be one, that we all may right. be one. He says he says he came so that he can make many sons and daughters. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so again, but when you look at the people of the nation, what nation of people does the world stand on their backs? Yeah. Yes. I think it's what Israel, you, his firstborn true. son. I I think for me what would throw me off and have me having the same thinking as my mm -hmm. husband was having and and many of us is in um Hizazon Zion or um Revelations where it talks about that um, worthy is the lamb that was slain. And mm -hmm. somehow it's like the picture was created of, of us, you know, when the angels are bowing down and the elders and they're saying mm -hmm. worthy is the 
Adam was slain to receive all riches and power and glory and wisdom to, re mm -hmm. to redeem us unto Yah. And so like you, you believed at that point that it's, that it's Yeshua that they're acknowledging in that way and bowing down and, and doing all of that for, but it's like mm -hmm. the question is, is, is that really what was happening or do we see it that way because the image has already been created in our minds? Yeah. So, yeah, so there's so much mm -hmm. that we can see here and we can pull out of there, but can you receive it? Can a man receive that? You know, can people receive that because he's so been brainwashed and it's relying on just the one when it's actually the nation? It can be. The concept can be the whole nation. That's what I want everybody to see. Yes. See. Right. I think I'm, I'm seeing that too. I was just yeah. thinking even in terms of the discussion we had prior about your trip and, and the mindset that us would oftentimes go over there with, not realizing that you're in a different place. So it really does make a difference. Yeah. You know, but so thanks for mentioning that. So now we start to yeah, see. It does. It makes a difference. You know, the and whole, another you, thing. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Yeah. You, you start to see that, right? You, you, and, and so the thing, again, remember what we teach in, in Christianity is uh, without the shed of blood, there is no remission of sin. But this parashah gives you the foundation. It actually lays that foundation. Because as you read down, as I go down here, it says, uh, talks about the laying on, uh, says the blood, says he shall sprinkle the blood, right? From it, talking about the sacrifice upon the altar. And the reason that's totally, that's complete, that's always talked about is because life is in the blood. And also, as you read, as we go down, it says that we're not supposed to eat blood because again, life is in the blood, right? Blood is important. Why is that? Because the foundation was laid in the garden of Eden, right? Because how were Adam and Eve, Adam and Quan, how were they clothed? There was a sacrifice slave that said he was saved for the foundation of the world. Yeshua wasn't there, but there was an animal. Blood was, was shed. Life. Life. A life for a life. You see that? A life for a life. Blood. Okay. And, and so, again, it, it, that's the important of it. And it, it, it telling us, it, and it talks about, it, it shows a balance. Actually, it, even these two he goats, these two goats show a balance in the forgiveness and how it works, right? Sacrifices, a living sacrifice. You know that second goat was a living sacrifice because the sins were placed on that goat that went out to Azazel. It was a living sacrifice. It was taking our sins upon it and going out and actually going out with it. He was a living sacrifice. And we're supposed to, again, Christianity said we are living sacrifices. Right? We're kind of like, they put it on us like we're scapegoats. We are to be living sacrifices. We're like going out to Azazel. And they say that, but, and it goes over our head. We don't see what we, we're saying. You see, because they've, they've taught us to, to have selective hearing, selective belief systems. It's been beaten in us for for generations, and and but 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 we can come out of that by studying the scripture and see what it really is saying in the foundational stages of this thing that we call you know, the 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 word of truth. You see, so it's important. It's so important for us, and it's important to discuss it because again, we all have thought processes that we go through, and we all have a different ways of understanding based upon where we come from and our life experiences and where we are spiritually in our walk. Our prayer life makes a big difference in how we receive the revelation of the word, okay? So I'm, I'm trying to go down because I want to get down, okay? Okay, this, okay, now verse 29, read what it says. Now we talk about the blood. See, before that, it talks about the blood and, and you know and, uh, and all this stuff, the importance of the blood that was shed and that is being shed. So our people being killed in the street just this morning, I was reading, you know, now yesterday, uh, people were dying. They, the blood is being shed life for life. It's still going on. It's still going on. So in this verse 29 says, this shall remain for you an eternal decree. 
Now you have to read what happened before then to get here, right? But I wanted to pull this out and I put it in kind of red because it's eternal. This shall be for you an eternal decree in the seventh month or the 10th day of the month. You shall afflict, your, afflict yourself, meaning we do what? What do we do when we afflict ourselves? That's what we, that's our day of, of what? Fasting. As a nation, again, as a nation. So if we're fasting as a nation, that means we're doing it for the world. Yeshua died for the world, and we are, and we are commanded to do this for the world, for eternally. See, but we've been focused on, we've been taught to look at just one man, but it's actually more than one man. We are a people that have the Mashiach who leads us as an example, but we are one with him and in him. And through him, we have oneness with the Father because of his teachings. And so he says, if they do this to the green tree, what they're going to do to you? We get the same, he says, the same thing that's happening to him happens to us, that nation of people. He says, in the seventh month, on the seventh, on, on the tenth of the month, you shall afflict yourself or fast, and you shall not do any work. It is a Sabbath. It is a high Sabbath. Neither the native nor the proselyte who dwells among you. There's one teaching, one command for those who are born Israel and those who have been grafted in. If you call yourself grafted in, Gentile grafted in, you are responsible to keep this eternal decree. In the seventh month, where we have the, the, the fast, right? That fast for that 25-hour fast for the Day of Atonement, you are responsible to do it. And it is our responsibility as Israel to make sure that you understand that. So all of our brothers and sisters that are into Christianity, Right now, we're declaring to you that you need to study this, and there is one teacher, one teaching, one law for all of us. Whether you're Israel or whether you are grafted into the tree, you are now responsible from this day forward. If you're hearing us discuss this now, if you've heard this, and if you're hearing this, you are now responsible, responsible to keep the Day of Atonement. And unless you have an ailment in your body, something that says you cannot fast, you will fast. You are responsible to fast. Unless you have a medical condition or there's some reason you cannot do a fast, abstain from food for the day, you are responsible to do that. That's an eternal decree on the Israelite and the proselyte, those who are grafted in to this tree of life. All right? You understand that? You're responsible now. He wrote it. He made it plain. We're declaring it on high. This is the day that you, this, on this day, if you've heard this, you are now responsible. He says, again, this shall remain for you an eternal decree in the seventh month. That's between, it's, it's going to hit like September, October, right? And we will show, we will tell you, we'll remind you. Hebrew congregation of Houston, we're going to remind all of our listeners that when that time comes, you're responsible, all right? It says, in the seventh month, on the 10th day of the month, which is the day of atonement, you shall afflict your soul, yourself, and you shall do no, you shall not do any work, neither the native nor the proselyte who dwells among you. For on this day, he shall provide atonement for you to cleanse you from all your sins before Hashem or before Yah. Hashem means the name. Okay. Before, and it's actually Yehovah or Yahuwah, right? Shall you be cleansed? You're responsible now. Eternally. He said, it is a Sabbath of complete rest for you. Sabbath meaning rest, right? It is a day of rest. It is a high Sabbath, you shall afflict yourself an eternal decree. Day of fasting, a day of fasting for the nation of Israel. And we're not just fasting for Israel, we're praying, we're, we're fasting for the entire world. We are responsible for a sustain to kun olam. We are repairing the world, right? That is, children of Israel, that's our responsibility to repair the world. Okay. 
And one of the ways we repair the world is to teach our brothers and sisters, especially in Christianity, because you have accepted Yeshua HaMashiach Ben David, but you've been led astray in not keeping the Sabbaths, which are our, we are commanded to do. It's not for those that are outside of Israel, because once you, once you say you're grafting, once you accept the Torah as your real life, you're now Israel, right? And, I just and you're wanted, responsible. I just wanted to tell people that you can mark your calendar. So our Shabbat is May 26th through the 27th. These are our days. That's mm -hmm. receiving our Torah. And then our Rosh Hashanah, what he's talking about, um, is going to be September 16th and 17th. And then we know the 10 days after that is the Yom Kippur on September 25th. And that's our atonement. So Yom Kippur is September 25th. And Rosh Hashanah is September 16th to 17th. That's our new year. Just mm -hmm. so you can mark your calendars. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, you know, this is important. I mean, this is, this is, this is our life. This is how we come out of, of this thing that we're in, where we're being killed in the street. This is, this is ushering in the prophet who's going to set everything right. This is once that prophet comes, then we can look for Mashiach. But we, as the priest, as it says here, the Kohen, the priest, we are the royal priesthood. When you take the Torah, the yoke of Torah on you, you become a part of the royal priesthood. You see, this is, you know, being called an Israelite, being called a Jew, this is a responsibility. It's not a badge of honor. It's a responsibility that we've taken upon ourselves. And you have to do it willingly. You know, we don't coerce people into to, 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 to taking up Torah. No, you have to ask, you know, how do I get involved in the Torah? We're not going to, you know, we're not going to do that. We're not, we don't, well, you, a man has to come willingly. You have to come willingly. You have to, it has to happen. And you, I, you know, my, my, my cousins and, and my uncles, and my aunts and all those, I don't compel them. I don't. I tell them about when they ask, I tell them about it. It's their choice. It's their choice. You see? It, and, and that's, and that, you know, and so that's why you don't see, uh, you don't see Jews going out doing missionary work. We don't go out doing missionary work. That's for Christianity. And that's what Islam, Islam doesn't even do missionary work, but they go out and they'll take over the land and, and force you to get into it, you know. But we don't do that. We don't, for, we did that one time. Did that one time in the old, in, in you know, in the early days. But since then, we don't do that. We don't go and compel people. You have to choose it. You have to choose it. You see. But so, so when you when you accept this yoke, this yoke upon you, and it is an easy yoke. People make you think that it's a difficult. No, it's an easy yoke because it's just like breathing. Once you learn how how it flows, when you, once you learn how to flow with the anointing again, hear that word I said anointing. You know what I'm saying? That it says the Cohen who has been anointed. Listen at that. So I'm using the term straight out. Uh, or the or the Kohen who has been Mashiach. He is Mashiach, anointed. He is anointed. Right? So when you take the yoke of Torah upon you and you begin to live it, you are flowing in the anointing. You're flowing in the Mashiach. You are now in the Mashiach. And Mashiach is going to lead you back to Torah all the time. And he's going to tell you about the various Sabbaths that we have. And it's going to tell you how to operate in the law. You know, this whole book of Leviticus it is teaching us how to walk in holiness. This book, this whole entire book, if you want to know how to be holy, if you want to be a part of the holiness church, then you need to know the book of Leviticus. I mean, when I say know it, that means be intimate with it. Be intimate with it. You see, so when we're talking about the Day of Atonement and we're talking about Shavuot and we're talking about Pesach, it won't be a foreign thing to you because you understand it came out of the Torah. You see, this is our lifestyle. This is how we live and move and have our being. It's with Torah and it will change your life. When you meditate in the Torah, it will, in effect, change your life because you will become a holy individual, especially when you know the book of Leviticus. When you're intimate with the book of Leviticus, it tells you how to be holy. Okay? So let's move on a little bit. It says, 
I'm going down to, this is uh, chapter 17. It says, in verse 5, it says, again, I'm hitting the highlights, right? It says, so that the children of Israel shall bring their feast offerings that they have been slaughtering on the open field, and they shall bring them to Hashem to the entrance of the tent of meeting, to the Kohen, and they shall slaughter them as a feast of peace offering to Hashem. So that's not relevant for us today, right? But it's, you have to know this foundation. You have to know this. It says, the Kohen shall throw the blood upon the altar of Hashem, right? Or I, should, I, I don't like using the Hashem, but it's okay because we don't, we don't want to put his name, you know, in front of everybody. Because if I look it over here in the Hebrew, as you can see it, Yuhei Vahe, right? You can see it. It's there. The name, it's saying the name. But we're not using the name because some people will misuse that name. So we, we've, well, the rabbis have put a fence around it, right? Protection around the name. So they use Hashem instead. That's why people don't use, you know, in the congregation, closed congregation, if you use the name that in your closed congregation and, and you know, instead of that, you know, it's a wonderful thing. We don't want the heathen to get it and misuse our name. Okay. He said, the Kohen shall throw the blood upon the altar of, the, of Hashem. And he says, at the entrance of the tent of meeting, and he shall cause the fat to go up, smoke uh, up in smoke for uh, for the satisfied aroma to Hashem. So you know what this means for us as children of Israel today. When we pray, and we pray several times a day, some you know three times, some two times, but we pray always. When we're praying, we're operating at the anointing, right? When we pray, it's as if the blood, the blood atoning blood. We are we are interceding like Moshe Rabbeinu interceded for us, like Yeshua interceded, right? Like we're interceding for, for our people. For our first, we 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 pray and we ask for forgiveness for our sins, and we pray for the forgiveness of the sins of the children of, of our family, and we pray for the forgiveness of the sins of all of Israel, and we pray for those who have, have, have sinned against us. We pray we release them, right? And it's just like it says here. It's just like, you know, it's the, the cold hand shall throw the blood. When we do that, it's like we're throwing the blood up on the altar. When we confess our sins and the sins of the of, of Israel and the sins of our family, it's like we're throwing that blood up there. Spiritually, we're actually doing that. Okay? Because in the natural realm, this is what happened in Israel in, in, in that time. It was a natural realm. But now we're operating in the spiritual realm. Right? So our prayers were offered up spiritual sacrifices that are pleasing unto the Father. And he searches out for those who are, are worshiping him in spirit and in truth. And so when we offer up our spiritual sacrifice, our prayers, and, our, and, our, and like the Day of Atonement, we're, we're fasting, we're offering up for the whole world. So the world would get right. So the world would know that he is our Father and that he, there is a God in Israel. This is what's going on spiritually. We are a royal priesthood. When we operate in the Torah, according to how we have been designed, we are his priesthood, a royal priesthood. We are Kohen or Kohenim. They shall no longer slaughter their offering to the demons after whom they stray. This, this shall be an eternal decree. Listen to this. This shall be a, 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 another eternal decree to them for their generations. So, what does this mean? They no longer saw their offering to the demons after whom they stray. When we operate outside of Torah, it's as if we're offering up strange fire. I just say it that way. When you're not operating in Torah, when you're not keeping the, Shaf the, the, the Shabbat, when you're not observing the laws and the commandments of Yah, and no matter what you're doing, I don't care who you say you are, if you're not doing it according to the Torah, it's as if it's, it's as if you're doing it to demons. It's like when Ezekiel goes in, he says they had their backs turned. There's 24, and they had their backs turned, and the, and the women were offering up uh, what was this incense to the Queen of Heaven. That's what is. That's exactly what it is. That's why it's so important. And this is an eternal decree. Do not follow the customs of the nations where we're scattered. And we have been doing this for generations. It's time for us to get out because we're we're reaping the punishment 
for our, 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 our neglect of, of submitting to the word of Yah. And we're following the wrong teaching because it says there's one teaching for the Israelite, for the proselyte, and for the stranger that have attached themselves, that's right, that have been engrafted in. Let me put it like that. Those that have been grafted in, if you grafted in, then you need to follow the Torah. I cannot compromise on that, okay? He says, um, and to them, you should say, any man of the house of Israel and of the proselyte. Again, I'm saying again, any one of the house of Israel and proselyte who shall dwell amongst you, who will offer up a, a burnt offering or a feast offering. I'm talking about your prayers now. When you start praying, if you are attaching yourself and grafted in, okay, and he will not bring it to the entrance of the tent of meeting to perform it service to Hashem, that man shall be cut off from the midst of it. What is he saying? If you're doing on any other day except the Shabbat, if you're doing on any other day, Monday to Sunday, Monday to the Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, if you're doing on any other day, it's as if you're doing it to demons because he has prescribed the times and his moedim. Let me put it that way. He has his set apart times, his dates. He has set them for the children of Israel and anyone who will attach themselves to him. You have to follow the same teaching, same commandments, same statutes, same judgment. There's no difference. So if you say it's okay for me to worship on the day because, because, you know, because Yeshua died on the cross, because, you know, you better go back and study scriptures. He said, this is an eternal decree. I don't care how many people have died. This is an eternal decree. And it is your responsibility, your resp not mine, your responsibility, once you get to work, because I'm going to do it as much as it, as it is within me, as much as I am able to, I'm going to do it. And I'm going to tell you and teach you the proper way to do it. It's up to you to submit to it. I'm not going to compel you. I'm not compelling anyone. It is your choice, your choice, okay? Any man of the house of Israel, call yourself an Israelite, line up with the word, and the proselyte who dwells amongst them, who will consume any, uh oh, here we go. Y'all like y'all steak rare? Y'all raise your hand if you like your steak rare. I, you know, you got to stop eating that steak rare. You got to get it well done. You know, you get rid of that blood, right? You got to get the blood because he says, any man of the house of Israel, of the proselyte who dwells among them, who, who will consume any blood, I will, I shall concentrate. Listen to this. I shall, that's a, that, and that right there is a legal term, shall. I shall concentrate my attention upon that's on the soul consuming the blood and I will cut it off from his people. For the soul of the flesh is in the blood. And I have assigned it for you upon the altar to provide atonement for your soul. That's why you don't eat that blood. It has been assigned. To, without the shedding of the blood, there is no remission of sins. The blood, the purpose of the blood is to pay for your sins. That's what it was, you know. And so our prayers now, our spiritual offerings are just like that blood has been shed. Every time we pray it. It's the same thing. So for, for y'all that like to go to a restaurant and try to follow after the heathen, because them heathens say you're getting all the vitamins when you eat that blood, don't follow the customs of those heathens. That's why they kill folk like them. That's why they're evil. That's why they're evil. They ain't supposed to eat that blood. Go ahead, sister. I see your hand up there. You got to say? I was thinking, my husband had a question too, but he's being shy about asking. But my <laughs> question was... <laughs> was um, well my comment was I, I remember growing up like most of the time black people didn't like their stuff they always asked for well done right mm -hmm. and then i started to notice this change like it's like as we started merging and hanging out with each other and the, the different the other cultures i, I mm -hmm. you know what i mean by mm -hmm. other all of a sudden i'll be doing a double take when i hear people talking about like rare or medium well but like naturally our natural thing was no we cook our food well done we don't leave no blood oozing out of the chicken and it was even gross like we were saying go oh yuck yeah <laughs> yeah yeah. To the point where I didn't even like liver because I felt like you can't really know that all of that blood came out and it just tasted like what it would taste like to me. So uh -huh. blood pudding, liver, none of that stuff, it grossed me out. But that was kind of leading to my um 
So I didn't, I didn't ever eat it because I just thought it was gross. And my mom would laugh. I'd pick out the veins and everything. I didn't want no blood, no nothing. I don't want to eat the bone marrow. <laughs> I want no blood. But my husband was, you know, yeah, I, I, asking something I mean, about that. I'm, I'm hearing you in terms of the, uh, even the idea of bloodshed, mm -hmm. where people have a thirst for blood. And so they want to consume blood with naturally or just visually. You know, but I was concerned seeing that there were so many of us out in the diaspora who have now been contaminated, where we have been separated, who indulge in such things as eating blood pudding. And, mm. and I'm thinking as a child, we did, but that's because we saw the adults. So now, you know, so you could see how there's really been a separation where we were no longer living to the holy standards that, that was established or set. Right. You know, so of course that brings a concern as to so many of us that did indulge in those things. And the word is so clear About that he would literally pay his attention. <laughs> and you don't want that 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 um, that wrath. So that that's yeah. what was. So it's like, so, what happens if you've done it already in your yeah. past? Is I think what he's asking. You know what they call that? If you've done it in the past, you know what they call it? Repent. Mm -hmm. That's okay. what I'm Repent. Tissue box. Mm -hmm. Tissue box. Tissue Repent. Box. Stop mm -hmm. doing it. When you when you when you get the truth, that's when you stop it. Right. So if you've done it in the past, okay. Now you know you're not supposed to do it. So uh, like uh, 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 Mora, Daniel said, she would Trevor. She was taking it. When you when you talk about taking the veins out, that's called tra mm -hmm. Trevery. Trevery, mm -hmm. removing the, all the blood. You want to make sure you get all. So you were Trevery, and you may not even know what it was, but that's what it is. You get it <laughs> My all mom out. would laugh at me. She would teach me, like, when Keisha cooks a, um, cleans a chicken, everything's out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. And so, you know, it's important. It's 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 so important to get you know to fuck because we are a royal priesthood. No, and and you know, our bodies are temple. And now again, this is a New Testament here. Our bodies are a temple of the Holy Ghost. Why? Because in the and it tells us how to do it in Leviticus. See, all they say in the New Testament, your body is a, 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 is a, a living, you know, is a temple of the God. But then I tell you, you know, the foundation of it is in the book of Leviticus. It tells you how to eat, how to take care of your body, because it is a holy temple. It is. So you get the foundation. One, one of the things you got to do is stop eating that blood. Right? There's a, there's a, cult, there's, you know, what does it say? Watch what it says. It says, therefore, have I said to the children of Israel, Right? Any person among you may not consume blood. Israel, if you call and you stand on the corner and I don't care where you are, you call yourself an Israelite, blood is not for you. Right? It's not for you. If you've been, stop now. Right? If you haven't read, you just stop. That's why it's important to read these par each of these parish or this weekly reading. You need to study it, meditate on it, and fall in line with it. But you got to understand, we discuss it because we understand what is relevant for today without the temple, right? Without the structural temple, how do we deal with it? Well, it's by your spiritual sacrifice, your prayers and obedience to the commandment. That's how we fulfill all those things that were going on then. That's how you do it. Obeying it, right? Living it and offer up your spiritual sacrifice. In other words, your prayers, okay? It says, and the proselyte who dwells among you may not consume blood. So for you all who are engrafted in, and I and you and you and we go out to eat, and and you've been engrafted in, you know you're coming out, you're a gentile, you're joining onto it, and then you say, uh, uh, "Brother, can I can I eat?" No, you got to get that blood out of there, man. You got to cook that thing. <laughs> you know, I want you know I want it cooked. So we don't eat blood. We have teeth. We don't eat blood. Blood is was used was used for sacrifices, and we. Offer by spiritual sacrifice was just like the blood. See, it's all about, it's like when Yeshua said, drink, drink this blood, you know, because it's, it, it reminds you of the blood sacrifice. And, and it should remind us, especially as African-Americans who were caught up in the slave trade, of the blood that was shed by our ancestors before they got, because that blood, you know, that blood, that's blood for blood. Right? Blood for blood. So somebody's going to be punished for, for the blood of our ancestors. Right? Blood calls for blood. It said, any man, 13, any man of the children of Israel and of the proselyte who dwells among them who will trap a beast or a bird that may be eaten shall pour out its blood and cover it with the earth. All right? So, again, got to get the blood out. Right? Amen. 
Amen. That's all Rabbi, I mean. we just wanted to interject and let you know that the time is um, coming near. So I'm I coming near. Uh oh, I got to move on. Give me extra time. Yeah. All right. Okay. Let me. Okay. Sorry, let me get out to. With mm -hmm. that, having said that, because we've discussed the blood, we've discussed the importance of it, right? Don't mm -hmm. eat the blood, right? So let's go on down here real quick, all right? R Rabbi, can I can ask a quick question. Yeah. Um, so understanding that that uh, idea of the blood, I was at um, Texas Roadhouse this weekend or this past week, and uh, I usually get medium well. That's how I usually get my steak, which is there's no blood coming out of the steak, right? Like it's a little bit pink in the middle, but there's no blood coming out of the steak. Um, but, you know, I ordered that at that Texas Roadhouse this past week and uh it came and it, it it was it was way less cooked than medium well and i was sitting there and i, I hate sending food back for multiple reasons you know not wanting to be rude but also you know know what people do to your food when you send it back and they say things personally etc and so i tried to eat it and it was just so unappetizing you know i had to send it back because it was some of the blood was coming out and i was like this must be what a medium steak looks like and it was you know it was really bothering me so I said to my wife, I was like, I'm going to have to just start going back to well done uh, because this is unacceptable to have this medium well looking like this. But um, I wanted to ask you, uh, you know, what is the line there? Is it when we say no blood, are we saying you can't do medium well? We're supposed to be a little pink in the middle or, you know, what is the what is the line? There? Let me give you the best answer for you. Don't eat at a Gentile restaurant in eight state. Go to a kosher restaurant. Let them fix it. Okay. That's the best answer I can give you. Go to a kosher restaurant, a Jewish yeah. restaurant, or a halal restaurant where the Muslims are. You will not eat blood. The best answer I can give you, get it well done. I've never ordered a medium well. If you get it well done, you don't have to worry about that. Yeah. Let's see. So the Muslims and the Jews know how to fix it so it'll still be tender and the blood is gone. But the important thing about that, but here, here's, the, here's the thing, but I'm going to tell you like this. It's the way that the animal is slaughtered, ritually slaughtered. And if they're, we heard me say the term trevoring, right? That means removing the veins, the fat, inside that fat are veins that, that hold the blood. And so that's why you go to a kosher butcher or a halal butcher. They're going to get, they're going to do the trevoring. They're going to get the blood out. Okay. They're going to do it. They know the importance of it because we, Muslim Jews, Israelites, we all eat this. We're supposed to eat the same way. We're supposed to have our food ritually slaughtered. So my best advice, go to Halal, go to a kosher cook, uh, uh, you know, place where the Jews eat. If you know where the Jews eat, go there. If you know where the Muslims eat, go there. Okay. Hey, check, the, check the phone book. That's my safest advice for you. And, and and Rabbi, another thing to in that same vein, I saw this article um, I was reading and it was saying it was a Jewish guy saying that uh, we shouldn't be eating anything from the hind parts of the cow. He was saying, yeah, I got a thousand brisket recipes, but I got no recipes for um, he was named one kind of a steak. That's a very common type of steak. He was saying and I didn't fully understand, but it seemed like a lot of people were agreeing with it. But he was saying, and I don't eat anything from the hind parts of the cow for whatever reason, only from, you know, certain certain parts of the cut. That's called glot. And that's not holds up for the children of Israel. As long as it's ritually slaughtered properly, it's good. Front of like the whole cow. Okay, that's a Jewish thing. Okay. And they call it glot. Okay. So, yeah, for us, you as long as it's properly uh ritually slaughtered like it, sh like it should be it's good it's all good mm -hmm. it's all good all right okay thank you for that but again my advice find you and notice i didn't say a christian restaurant <laughs> yeah. i said muslim right or jew or yeah. israelite or a vegan you know but not a christian because you find them christians are eating that blood they're drinking that blood and glass a glass a glass of blood they're drinking it down whole this is gross. Yeah, and I have to agree with that from personal experience. Um, before we were even going kosher or have keeping a kosher kitchen or any of that, 
we were eating kosher and sometimes halal if that was what we could find because of that same reason because as you know i just went through that i couldn't stand the blood and all of that kind of stuff and what i found we started off with it from an organic book that we were thinking but when i started to use the kosher chicken because they were saying you could use organic or kosher i didn't have to do as much in terms of the cleaning out of the blood and all that that i would have to do before which most of the times when i did clean it i would be so grossed out by it when I had to before using the kosher or the halal meat that I would eat it the second day. I couldn't even eat it the first day because I had seen all that and I was gross. And so, yeah, kosher, it, it's like, you'll you'll appreciate it if you're still, we're not really eating meat anymore, but if you still are, you'll appreciate the, how much less work in your cleaning, you know, yeah. practice you'll have to do. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So it is a transition, right? This, this is a transition. This is, not, this is a, a road that you choose it, right? Because mm -hmm. it's the way that we're supposed to go. So there, there are some things we have to learn, right? And, and it's because we are a holy nation. Now here in chapter eight, I'm gonna move on a little bit. It's still, we're still talking the same thing, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna read this. It says, chapter 18, verse one, it says, Hashem spoke to, the, to Moses saying, speak to the children of Israel and say to them, I am Hashem your God, right? Do not perform the practices of the land of Egypt in which you dwell. Do not perform the practice of the land of Canaan to which I bring you. Do not follow their traditions. All right. He says, carry out my law. That's why I said there is a transition because I just told you, we just talked about the blood now. We just, we, we're talking about these things, right? Carry out my laws and safeguard my decrees. Now, in other words, put a fence around my decrees to follow them. I am Hashem, your God. So when you do these things, you're showing that he is your God. And, and even more than that, you're showing that he is your father. He said, you shall observe my decrees and my laws, which man shall carry out and by which he shall live. I am your father. All right? Important. So that's the chapter. That's chapter eighteen. We're starting to talk about what Kedoshim, holiness, right? Kedoshim, right? So he's telling you, this is this is the first step: is to find out what the teachings are and obey them, and don't follow the customs of the land. You know, like Christmas. And Rabbi, Halloween can you bring, and, a, bring the screen back up? Oh yeah. Where okay. am I? Okay. Yeah. Well, let me let me read. You know. Uh, going down chapter 18, you read that chapter 18, you see all the stuff you're not supposed to do? Uh -huh. All these things they were doing and are doing in the United States of America. All of these things that are written here. Everything in there that we're not supposed to do is done in America and you see it being played out on the screen and the street and the news every day. We are not to do that. When they talk about binary and all this trans, trans transgender stuff, and they want you to accept it, reject it. You don't have to hate the people for it, but you don't have to condone it, don't follow it, because it is not who we are. He said, do not contaminate, do not become contaminated through any of these. For through all of these, the nations that I expelled before you became contaminated. Do not be contaminated by agreeing with this foolishness that's going on in the United States that they're trying to put on the continent of Africa, do not agree with it. Do not agree with it. And if they call you homophobic, say, yes, I am. Mm -hmm. Yes, I am. Because my father said it is an abomination. I sound like a Republican, don't I? I don't follow them. <laughs> okay? I don't follow them. I follow the Torah. Right. But I'm living in the land of a captivity and these things are presented to me every day. And I have to choose and you all have to choose, especially during the voting season. I'm, I'm getting off of the thing. No matter which side you go on, you're going to find that they're operating in things that are outside of the Torah. And so we are placed in a dilemma. We are in a dilemma. It's a, it's a, but study the Torah, follow the Torah, follow the Torah at all times, you know, and, 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 and we can, if we compromise, it's going to come into our families. 
into our home. You see, so we have to be aware. You know, it's a tough, it's a tough, but it's a truth that we have to stand by. He says, "You shall safeguard my charge not to do any of the abominable traditions, abominable traditions that were done before you, and not contaminate yourself through them." I am your father, your God. So you know, again, we're in the land of Egypt. We're in the land of Canaan. All combined, and we're in Babylon, all combined into this one place that we live in. Be good citizens. This is my advice. Be a good citizen, pay your taxes, right? Follow the laws of your father. Obey the laws of the land so you can be at peace, right? Do that, okay? Do that. Remember who you are. More importantly, remember whose you are. Our laws, the laws of our Father, supersede all that they have. Ours are better. Our laws are better because it keeps us holy, keeps us from being contaminated with the filth that is in the land. Everything that that, that from, from that when it starts from that, that that second verse, I guess, and all the way down to where I am at the end of this eight, all of it. My goodness, my goodness. Just read that stuff, and you if you if you don't see that happening, if you you can see it, and and we're reaping the the the, the this we're suffering for it, and you go into the in 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 the uh, uh, I guess the book of Romans it talks about this, it talks about this, you know, and so you can't escape it. It's here, it's the, you know the truth is here, and 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 all I can say is choose today, choose, choose. That's all. I just choose, choose. Which way you want to go? You want to follow the laws? He said, do not be contaminated. Follow my laws, my decrees, my judgments. Follow them. Remain holy. If you want to be holy, obey what the scripture says. Get the foundation of it. Begin to live it, and you begin to see the changes. It is a challenge because we live where we live, but we can do it. With the help of the Holy Spirit, you can do it. With the hope, with the help, my father uses my dad used to say, with the hope of the Holy Spirit. But with the help of the Holy Spirit, you know, he was closer to Africa than I am. But with, 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 the, with the help of the Holy Spirit, you can do it. You can overcome all things because the Holy Spirit is our paraclete. The Holy Spirit is our helper. Okay. For those that understand it, when Yeshua went on the cross, when he left on the when he left on the tree. When he left, he sent a paraclete. We call him the Holy, the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, to be our counselor and our guide. A lot of people don't know I know about that because I'm a rabbi, but uh, brother, I studied the scripture. I don't care what people say. I'm going to study what the scripture says, right? And I'm going to stand with the Father. I'm going to stand with what his word says over anything else. So he sent the Holy Spirit to dwell within your heart, to, to, to help us along, along the way. And it's your choice whether you accept. And, and the Holy Spirit is not going to be contrary to the word. It's going to agree. The Holy Spirit and the word are going to agree as one. No separation. They're going to agree. So if you're following something that, that, that you say a spirit is telling you to do something and it's contrary to the word, that's from the other side. Excuse me, Rabbi. You bring yes. your main screen up. Oh, I, I thought I put it up. Yeah, yeah. You know I'm a senior, right? Y'all know I'm a senior. <laughs> you got to remind me sometime. <laughs> uh, you got to remind me. I'm a senior now. Okay. <laughs> I thought, no, I'm an elder. I put, uh, you know I'm an elder. Man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So, so you know, it just, it's it's um, get you some spirit. Get you some word. Get you some Holy Ghost. You know, walk, flow in the Holy Ghost. How you going to flow in the Holy Ghost? By obeying the Torah. That's how you go flow in the Holy Ghost. That's how, if you want to know how to do it, obey the Torah and you begin to flow in the Holy Ghost. You want to speak with tongues? You will. You'll be baptized in the fire and you'll be speaking, you'll be speaking Hebrew. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's the holy tongue. You'll be speaking Hebrew, the holy tongue. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Ah, listen to that. See, that's the holy tongue. <laughs> uh, 
All right. Amen. Amen. My husband was laughing because last week when um, Minister Moore was speaking, I was like, I think I could actually point out a Hebrew word for everything he said. <laughs> I won't tell you what I came up with that he was saying, but <laughs> yeah. yeah but... I was like, maybe Rabbi is right because, you know, we've we've drafted that out before. And I was like, I don't know. <laughs> I have heard some Hebrew words come out some of the folks out. I have heard it. You yeah, know. yeah, yeah. Cool. Well, thank you for your word today, Rabbi. We appreciate it. You've certainly given us a lot of food for thought. You know, so we meditate upon it, and we ask you out there to do the same, to, to think on what you've heard. You know, we serve a, a holy uh, who requires that we also walk in holiness, as the Rabbi was just sharing with us and, and so we do have to inspect our walk and, mm -hmm. and do things that we know he has established for us to to do and don't do as we did in egypt but do as he has instructed us to do so that we could walk holy and be before him as a holy people who could indeed to shuva for this world so that the world in turn could return back to a holy god who requires mm -hmm. us to be holy so thank you for your word of mm -hmm. encouragement today. Mm -hmm. Thank mm -hmm. you. you wanna... Yeah, I guess I'll just say thank you. We, are. we just want to thank you. Yeah. We just want to thank you. Yeah. We just want to thank you. You, yeah. The song that we were going to sing earlier was um, Psalms 100. And there's a part of it that says, Serve Yah with gladness and come before his presence with, thing, with singing. And know ye that Yah, he is God, it is, or Elohim, it is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pastures. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For Yah is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. At this time, I believe we're supposed to turn the prayer um, to Minister Griff, and he will wrap up this portion Amen. of the service. Yes? Yes. Okay. Thank you, Brother Griff. More Amen. Griff. More Griff. Yes. Many, many titles and hats, right? <laughs> Hey, man, I got my camera off, y'all, because I'm lagging a little bit. So hopefully y'all can hear me. Uh, yes. I'm praying this prayer. Bless you, Elohim, creator of the universe. Bless you, Elohim, sustainer of life. Bless you, Elohim, for you are one. Father, we come to you on this Shabbat day just with prayerful hearts, just thanking you for another chance to pray your name and do your will, praise your name and do your will. We thank you for another chance to rest and to just re-energize and refuel for this upcoming week. We thank you for instituting Shabbat for us, Father, that we may come to your holy day and have this day of rest and be able to just do all the things in which you've commanded us with Shabbat being in the forefront. We just thank you for the word we received today for Rabbi and Sister Elisa and Sister Easter making it back and being able to come back on the show and deliver such a poignant word for us that we can take and we can eat from and we can uh, just continue to to put into our lives, put into practice, Father, so that we may uphold your name and your righteousness and all the things that you've commanded for us to do. We ask that as we move forward, that you just empower us by your spirit, Father, for we are simply humans, but we know that in our weaknesses, you are made strong. And so we embrace those things in which we may be weak in, and we give those things to you and allow you to take those things from us, that you may be made strong in those things, and that we can glorify your name in all that we do. In everything that we do in all of our footsteps, we know that you'll be a lamp unto our feet, Father. If we just have trust and faith and take the steps, that you'll be the one to come through and you'll be the one to uphold us in all those on all those moments that uh, we are unsure or we may have anxiety or anything else, Father, that you will be the one that will uphold us and will make us strong in those moments. So we thank you for that. We thank you for being the healer of healer and the Lord of lords and the king of all kings for just being uh, such a, a great and wonderful God unto us. We thank you, Father, for for the word that has gone out into the land today. We ask that we not only be hearers, but also doers of the word. Empower us to continue to change our lifestyle day by day for 
We know that we all may come from different places, different backgrounds. We all may be on different parts of this journey, but you'll meet every single one of us exactly where we are and pull us up to where we're supposed to be, Father. We give you the honor, the glory, and the praise for looking at us in our lowly condition and still allowing us to come back to you, Father, for leaving a remnant not only within this earth, but within each of us that we can find our way back to the truth and find our way back to you and who we're supposed to be in this world, who you created us to be on this earth, Father. We ask that as we move forward, you continue to just give us more revelation, give us more wisdom, give us more knowledge, give us more ways to know you and more ways to just praise your name and more ways to reflect you on this earth and in this reality, Father. We just thank you for, for inviting us into eternity, for giving your son, Yeshua, the Mashiach, and allowing us to come to you directly, Father, for tearing that veil and allowing us to see you and have one-on-one -on -one personal relationship, Father, that we don't we don't live as as we used to in our BC days, Father, before Christ days, but we live according to a to a AD to a to a resurrection, Father. That every day we can just wake up and experience resurrection again and again, not just on so called Easter, Father, but every single day we have access to your resurrection and just raising anew in your glory and in your presence. We just thank you for all of these things, Father. We thank you for allowing us to have generations available on this call, Father, for allowing us to have multiple generations here and to be family and to be able to come under one umbrella and one name and one teaching and to just give you the honor, the glory and the praise that you call uh, of us from ancient father that for you said you would not forsake your heritage. You will not abandon your people. We stand on that promise as we move forward. And as we uh, go on in this life, father, we just know that you are a gracious God, slow to anger, compassionate. And we just thank you for all of those eternal traits that you've given us. And we ask that we're able to reflect those traits Unto our, unto our family, uh, unto our immediate family and our distant family and unto this world. Father, allow us to just be reflections of you in all that we do and to give you all the honor, glory, and the praise in our actions and our speech and in our habits, Father. We just thank you so much. We ask that you cast a uh, protection upon everybody that's on this line and anyone who may be listening for protection for our health, protection for our finances, protection for our spirit, protection for our sanity, protection for our minds, for our hearts, just all the things in which, you know, uh, our cares of this world, Father, we ask that you protect us in every way that you seem fit, for we know it's all according to your will, and that if you'll even, even watch over the birds and the lilies of the field, how much more will you watch over us, Father? We stand on that promise and on that inheritance that you've given us, and we just ask that you continue to just lead us and guide us and sustain us in all ways. We thank you so much, Father. We Again, we just thank you for your Shabbat rest. And that's that we're able to carry this out. And we're able to give you the honor, the glory, and praise on this day and on all days. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you for that wonderful prayer. Um, we are continue to bless each and every one of us, as you've already said. And again, to everyone that is listening, we thank you for tuning in. And hope that this session has been a blessing to you. And that you would allow Yah to do a work in you, that you would begin to see things as He has ordained for us to see it, and according to how He has called us to walk. So may you be blessed this week, and have wonderful rest for the rest of this day. We thank you once again in Yah's holy name. Shabbat shalom. Shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shalom, shalom. Aleichem. And shalom. Shalom. shalom.